when you first get started with Uber Eats, there may be some things that you can do that will actually make you more money or save you some time, but you don't know about them in the beginning. Of course, when you know better, you do better. That's why in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you six tips that are great for new Uber Eats drivers that will help you make more money or decrease the amount of time you spend on each delivery, which in turn helps you make more money. So let's get into it. Hello everyone, this is Elijah with the Rideshare Guy, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about six tips that are great for new Uber Eats drivers to start implementing today. These tips will either help you make more money in the grand scheme of things, or they'll help you avoid potential pitfalls that actually lower your income. So let's go ahead and jump into it with tip number one, which is to have a delivery bag. I know that seems kind of underwhelming, but hear me out. When I say have a delivery bag, Uber Eats used to give bags away, but to my knowledge, they've stopped doing it. You want to have a neutral bag. That means I don't recommend that you use a DoorDash or Postmates. So like if, you, if you're doing any of these other apps, I don't recommend you use their bag on Uber Eats because truth be told, those bags are kind of tiny, as you can see on the screen. They're not really equipped to deal with all situations. And let's say you get an order that has a lot of stuff and then you end up getting another order that has a lot of stuff. So you got two deliveries. That little bitty bag is probably going to be not enough. So you want to have a big bag and that's usually something you got to get on your own. So this is the one that I personally use. It is a little more costly, but at least you'll know you'll be equipped for all situations. A great example of a common food that's way too big for those little bags that other companies give you is pizza. It's clearly not going to fit a medium to large size pizza in that little bag. But if you have a pizza bag, then you're good to go. And if we're being honest, you could always just write off the money you spend on this bag off on your taxes. And as an added bonus to this tip, if customers see you have a bigger bag or more professional bag than your competition, which is, if we're being honest, each other, then they may be more likely to give you just a little more on the tip because you went that extra mile. Tip number two is to use Waze for your navigation. Now, when you're first starting out, you may not think that your navigation plays that big of a role when it comes to driving, but trust me, it can make a huge difference in your earnings. The reason it plays such a huge difference in your earnings is because Uber Eats works on a particular algorithm and based on how you're positioned in your market, that will determine how many pings and how fast you get the pings. So you wanna be in the right place at the right time as much as possible. And you have the ability on Waze to favorite a location so that it's saved inside the app itself. Then you can navigate towards that location at any point with the press of a button. Why is that useful as an Uber Eats driver? Because after driving for a little while, you're gonna to start to notice where you tend to get the most pings at certain times. And you can navigate to that location off the Waze app right after you complete an order on Uber Eats. So work with me here. Let's say you just dropped off an Uber Eats order and you're not too far away from a place where you just notice you get more pings if you're in that area. If it's saved in your Waze map, just press a few buttons and you can go ahead and start navigating towards that place so you'll be more likely to get a ping faster. So let's actually take a look at how to set this up inside the Waze app. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is open the Waze app and we're gonna to go to search. Then click on favorite places and anytime you find that there's an area that you tend to get more pings in, just look for a public place in that area that you can use kind of as an anchor point. So. Uh, for instance, I'm going to just pick something at random. I know there's a Chipotle that's uh, not too far from here. So I'm going to click type in Chipotle. Then Waze is going to search for one. And then it gives me a list of all these Chipotles that um, I can pick from. Obviously, it's going to pick the closest one. So you're going to click on that. And then it's going to ask what name do you want to give it. And you can just keep it as it is. Or you can put... Uber Eats Hotspots. Since you get a lot of orders when you're at that Chipotle. And then boom, that favorite is now saved. So scroll to the, as you see, I have a lot of favorites, but we see if we scroll down to the bottom, it says Chipotle, Mexican Grill, Uber Eats Hotspot. It's uh, really that simple. The third tip is to do the math before you actually accept the trip. So when you're first getting started, 
you may have a habit of just kind of accepting everything just so you can get the feel of the app. And that's fine, but just do like three or four deliveries in that regard. Because a lot of times, some of these deliveries, you'll actually be losing money if you don't actually do the math. In fact, if you've done delivery on these other apps before, I would just skip that first step and just go right into what I'm saying right here. So the rate I always shoot for is a dollar per mile. That's the minimum. However, I know in my market, I can get away with a dollar 50 per mile. So just use a dollar per mile as a baseline, but eventually you're gonna find out what your market has to offer in terms of earning power. So what does that actually look like? Let's ground this. So let's say I get this request on the screen here and I look at how far it's going in terms of mileage, both to the restaurant and when I leave the restaurant to the drop off, what's the total mileage? Now, if the mileage evens out to be a dollar per mile, then I will go ahead and take it. If it doesn't, then I'll go ahead and decline. And I know some of y'all may be thinking, but customers can tip afterwards. I base my estimate based on what I see in front of me because a customer could always not tip. The only exception to that rule is if I'm in an area where I know most people tend to tip, then I might speculate a little, but that aside, I just base the earnings on what I know, which is the number I see right in front of me. And just to add a little icing on the top for this tip, uh, pay attention to where the drop off is. Eventually you're gonna learn your area and surroundings. And if the drop off is in an apartment complex or an apartment building where that, that delivery is gonna take longer, you need to kind of mentally calculate that into whether you wanna take the trip or not. So let's say if it's paying a dollar per mile, but it's going to an apartment building where I need to go to the 15th floor to bring the food up. A dollar per mile wouldn't be enough in that situation. It would need to be at least a dollar fifty or two dollars per mile to make up for all the time it's going to take to bring the customer the food. So just start calculating that into the uh, equation. But the summary of this tip is actually just do the math. Not, it doesn't have to be every single step, but just do the math and see if it actually makes sense to take that delivery. Tip number four is to track your mileage. So when we first get started, there's some things that we don't really think about because it's a new world to us, so to speak. And tracking your mileage is one of those things we tend to not think about. Well, it's important to uh, track your mileage. Uber tracks your mileage, but they're not gonna track everything for you. And if you track your own mileage, it's gonna do wonders for you when tax time comes around because it's worth a big deduction. Now, I'm not gonna go heavy into taxes in this video. We've actually done a video on taxes, so if you wanna know more tricks of the trade to minimize your tax liability and maximize which deductions are available to you, I recommend you check this video out on the screen. Now there are a few apps you can use to track your mileage, but I recommend using Stride. I've been using Stride for years and it also has things inside the app that you can use to track other deductions. Also, all you have to do is press a button on the Stride app as soon as you start your shift, so to speak, and it will start tracking it. Sometimes the app will actually detect when you're moving and ask if you want to start tracking your miles right now, just in case you forget, and then just turn it off once you're done with your shift. Tip number five, please, please, please do not fill up on gas while you're on a delivery. See, I'm an Uber Eats customer and it annoys the heck out of me when I just see my driver just stop. Like, well, what's going on? Why are they stopping? Then I zoom in on the map and I see that at a gas station. I mean, it's a scientific fact that people's patience wears thin when they're hungry. Is it a scientific fact? Well, I don't know if it's a scientific fact, but it's definitely a social fact. And the repercussions of this could actually be kind of big. So a lot of y'all know that on Uber Eats, people have the option to tip you after you've delivered the food, but they can also just tip you before. But after you drop off the food, they have up to an hour to change the tip. So if they just feel generous, they can actually increase the tip in that time frame. Well, if they see you're stopping for gas and you're holding up the progress of them getting that food in their stomach, the chance of that happen dramatically decreases. Not to mention that they could give you a thumbs down for that, which would result in your satisfaction rate taking a hit. So the easiest way to avoid this is just to fill up on gas between deliveries. Of course, if you're in a situation where you have to, have to, like literally like the car is about to stop, you kind of don't have a choice in that matter, but you have control of the situation to make sure it doesn't get that far. Just try and avoid filling up on gas in general while you're on delivery because people can see you in the app and they can see you moving to the restaurant and also moving to their home. 
If you want a visual of what this looks like, I recommend you check out our Uber Eats customer app tutorial where I show you how to order off of Uber Eats and you'll get to see what the customer sees or you could always just order from Uber Eats yourself. The sixth tip is to not wait too long at restaurants. When you're first starting with Uber Eats, you don't really know what too long is, but as someone who's been doing it for over five years, I can just tell you right now, anything over five minutes is technically too long. And once you've been there for five minutes, you need to start evaluating where you should cancel the delivery and cut your losses and try and get another delivery. The only exception to this is if you drove a while to get to the restaurant, but just a bonus tip, you don't want to drive a long way to get to a restaurant anyway. But the most practical way to put this tip into use is to literally look at the time when you walk in the restaurant if the food isn't ready and then look at the time when you leave. And if it was past five minutes, you need to take that in consideration next time you go to the restaurant. This will help you maximize earnings as you'll be able to get more deliveries in an hour, which by default will increase your hourly earnings. And just in case you're wondering, you do get paid for wait time, but it's literally pennies. It's gonna vary depending on your market, but it's usually under 10 cents. So it's literally not worth your time to really be waiting at all, but you gotta give a little cushion to restaurants, but that little cushion is really five minutes. Any more than that, and that's when you're starting to lose money. So. Don't wait more than five minutes at a restaurant. And if you find that you have to habitually cancel deliveries from restaurants due to long wait times, you should reconsider even going there in the first place when you see the ping pop up. And there we have it. We have six tips that are gonna greatly help Uber Eats drivers. If you start taking these tips into consideration, you're gonna find that you'll start making a little bit more money and those situations which end up lowering your per hour earnings will start to go away because you're better equipped to deal with them. That does it for this video. I will catch you in the next one. If you found value in it, give it a like. It helps us out with the YouTube algorithm. It's very much appreciated. As well, subscribe if you're new and hit that bell icon. We publish new videos every single week, so be sure to check in to see when we upload new content. I will catch you in the next video. Be safe and profitable, everyone.